Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back for some more quantum angular momentum. Last time we quantized orbital angular momentum and we showed that the three components were self-adjoint and we derived commutation relations amongst the three components. Now that's crucial because we're going to define a generalized quantum angular momentum. Okay? And this is just any three self-adjoint or Hermitian operators, J, we're calling them J now, not L, J1, J2, J3, which satisfy these commutation relations. Okay? Any three self-adjoint operators or Hermitian operators that satisfy this are called quantum angular momentum operators. So why are we doing this? Well, it turns out that in quantum mechanics there are a number of different types of angular momentum. And what is common amongst them all is they have the same algebraic structure. They have the same commutation relations amongst the operators that, uh, the self-adjoint operators that define them. So we're going to develop a general theory all in one and we will adapt it to the particular physical situation for which we're interested in describing, such as quantum orbital angular momentum or spin, which doesn't have a classical analog. And we'll see that as we get to the end of this chapter. Okay, but now you can see there is a bit of an issue because angular momentum is a vector it has three components, and quantum mechanically, we would like to observe the quantum mechanical manifestation of that vector, the three operators, but they don't commute. So we have difficulties. In fact, we cannot find a basis that is common to each self-adjoint operator, J1, J2, and J3. Remember, we had a theorem about that earlier on. So, what do we do? Well, here's what we could do. Now, if you think, this is heuristic, if you think about a vector in three dimensions, it has a magnitude and a direction, okay? two different quantities that would describe it. So let's look at the vector j, the operator vector, and let's, let's look at what we will refer to as its the square of its magnitude. Now, strictly speaking, we need to define what we mean by that. j dot j, it's j1 squared operators now, j1 operating on j1, j1, j2, j2, plus j3, j3. Okay. If J1 and J2 and J3 are Hermitian, then this quantity is clearly Hermitian. Okay, because it's the sum of three Hermitian operators. The product of Hermitian operators is Hermitian. Okay. So what, where does that get us? Well, we have this proposition. This is a very important proposition. It says that J squared commutes with each of the components of J. All right, now if that's true, well, it is true, we're, we're, the proof is here. It's a little bit tricky, but it's here. It, it follows that we can find a set of eigenvectors that are eigenvectors for both J squared in any one component of J. And we're going to take that to be J3 as a result of tradition, mostly. Okay, so we can find a common set, a set of simultaneous eigenvectors for J squared 
and J3. Okay, so if you go through the proof of this, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, I didn't tell quite the truth. This is, I think this is the last time I use I as an index. Sorry about that, but it shouldn't cause any trouble here. So J squared, commutator of J squared with um, Ji, it's Ji, J, J sub J, J sub J. Why is that J squared? The summation condition. Commutator with Ji. Okay, now we use that identity from earlier on that we uh, dealing with a commutator of a product of operators with an operator that we use over and over. And for the commutators here, we use the definition, the fact that they satisfy this commutation relation earlier. We write it all out. So this is the commutation relation. This is the result about um, splitting up the commutator in this way. And what we see is we get a quantity, the Lebesgue symbol is anti-symmetric in J and K, and this quantity is symmetric in J and K. That is, we can reverse J and K and nothing changes, but if we reverse J and K here, we get zero. Or we change the sign, sorry. Okay, the only way we can have a product this way is if the, is if the term, the entire term is zero. Okay, so I included a few more steps to work that out if you're interested, but that's a crucial result. And it's what I said, we can, we can choose, we can choose uh, what J squared commutes with J three. So we can, com we can, con there exist a set of common eigenvectors for both J squared and J three. It's up to us to construct them, find the eigenvalues and so on. And that is the next topic that we're going to go into. The eigenvalue eigenproblem for quantum theory of angular momentum, which boils down to the eigenvalue eigenvalue problem for j squared j3. Th okay, that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.